So we're going to talk a little bit about what the training program looks like for a watchmaker. Mike, now you started with an apprenticeship. Yeah, there's, so a, there's a couple different avenues. I started off, I didn't, I wasn't born a watchmaker, I was born an aircraft mechanic. <laughs> I decided I, I changed fields because I always had a fascination with timepieces and watches and it started more as a hobby than I went into it 17 years ago now. I, I just dove head, head into it. It didn't make sense when I tell a lot of people that I came from the world of aviation until I went to Switzerland. And when I went to Switzerland, the first thing, you know, they said, what did you do before you were a watchmaker? And I said, I worked in airplanes. And they said, oh, it makes sense. And I said, no, explain to me why it makes sense. And they said, well, in Switzerland, you go to school as a watchmaker. Then when you join the military, they make you an airplane mechanic. So it was just, it was the flip side of it. So that's why it made sense. And ever since then, it made more sense to me. But it's precision mechanics and not so much as remembering everything you do, but remembering where to find the knowledge and the information and the resources to actually do the work. As they told us in the Navy, always know the reference to consult. Exactly. So be, be able to back yourself up. That's a fact. If you don't know, know where to find it. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the AWCI. Now, mm -hmm. you're from that kind of old American watchmaking yep. heartland of Ohio, western Pennsylvania. Yep. And in the U.S., Harrison, Ohio is where the AWCI, which is the American Association of Watchmakers and Clockmakers, Institute, I should say, yeah. is based. And that's where Mike's from. So there is the WOSTEP. Yep. Now in its 50th year, <coughs> and the SAUDA. Uh, could you explain the difference between them? Um, AWCI is, they, they have a lot of training courses right now, and anybody can take the training courses, and they start off from basic watchmaking to more advanced courses leading up to certifications. Uh, for anybody wanting a little bit of knowledge, absolutely, you know, go ahead, go online, sign up, take a course, take a basic course, and you'll be surprised at how much you don't know. And you'll be able to you know, surprise at how much it pushes you. They'll, they'll push you and how much knowledge you can gain about what you don't know. Uh, the, the courses are readily available. And like I said, they, you come out of it knowing a lot more and just being a lot more confident, whether you're just a collector or you, know, or you want to be a watchmaker. You'll find out, you know, some people find out they want to be a watchmaker, but it's harder than they thought it was. Um, that that's one route. Uh, we, you have the other schools. You have you have Wolstep, which is actually a school, and you can actually start you go to the school in Switzerland. They start apprenticeships in high school, going through. Um, the, a lot of the different brands have different schools. One of the interesting nice things I saw with Chopard, where they had their own school up in Florida, was when you graduate from that school, they didn't want you to come back and work for them for two years, because they wanted you to go out and work for another house somewhere and get different knowledge. Then you can come back in two years and bring that knowledge back with you. So it's interesting to note that uh, the WOSTEP, established in 1966, originally a, a campaign by the U.S. government to help train American watchmakers as that old Midwest of American watchmaking was dying. Uh, this year is their 50th year. Yeah. There is both the physical WOSTEP, which is in Neuchatel, that's a school you yeah. can go to, and a great one. And then there are the affiliate programs at schools around the world. In the U.S., we have the Nicholas Hayek School, and we also have the Dallas-Fort Worth operation, mm -hmm. which is largely funded by Rishma. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the, the Hayek School is down, uh, down in Miami, and it's right down here locally. And I, I, you probably know the number of students they take every year. Yeah. <laughs> in, in general, you can count them on the fingers yeah. of two hands. It's very exclusive and very selective. And people, like when I was applying Navy OCS, people will just keep applying year after year yeah. until they get in. It's that kind of thing. And, and the thing is, too, it's not just you can't just say, I want to go to the school. You have to pass... Um, different small exams, uh, dexterity exams, you know, basic knowledge of, of what you're doing. Uh, you, you, you basically can't be all thumbs. They can't turn anybody into a watchmaker. Yeah. You know, they know that from the start. And th yeah, that's true. There's definitely a ceiling in terms of manual dexterity. I've done some work with these movements and I, I can tell that it's very, very difficult on even a basic, you know, dumb as nails, pocket watch sized 6497. So you get small, you get down to little ladies, you know, lozenge movements from the 40s and 50s, it becomes very delicate indeed. That's what I learned on. <laughs> Mike saw a lot of those. And I saw a lot of those coming up. Uh, so I do want to talk a little bit about the difference between uh, WOSTEP and, and SAUDA. And kind of, we talk about where WOSTEP came from historically. Where did SAUDA come from? <laughs> you tell me. Okay. <laughs> you, and you, have, you know this knowledge. Okay, this, th you this is true. better than I can. Th this is something uh, that Rolex has advanced. Rolex increasingly looking at the demands seen in its own service centers in the United States. Uh, an understanding of refinishing is increasingly emphasized. A focus on Rolex-based movements in the school 
phase of training where previously something like a 6497 would have been used for manual wind, a 2824 mm -hmm. would have been used for an automatic, a 7750 would have been the chronograph. Okay. Now they're seeing Rolex based calibers early okay. on in their training. Um, principal schools, uh, North Seattle Community College, kind of off the beaten path but very highly regarded in the industry and has been now for the better part of two decades, and also Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and Lidditz. And like I said, Lidditz, uh, more than anybody else, that was, when I was coming up, that was the school you wanted to go to because that was Rolex. And that was, the, you know, you came out of there, you know, making, making watches. Yeah, you know, they, they made watchmakers. And, um, you know, I, I can't say enough about, about the school and what they turn out. And they say and plus the instructors. The instructors are hard as nails there. They, they do come out with a distinctly Rolex loyalty and, and yes. worldview. There is that. They bleed green.